All right, guys, there's a lot of these Sherpa 100s out there. They pretty much reach the end of their useful life after you've recycled them or recharged them about 100 times. Uh, the batteries just don't last forever, unfortunately. Also, unfortunately, when you send these back to goal zero, they don't rebuild them. So they, the batteries are not that easy to replace. Inside of this thing, and this is absolutely awesome piece of equipment, it's a 98 watt hour. So when you do the math on this thing, it's 8,800 milliamp hours rated at 11.1 .1 volts. And that works out to 26,400 if you rate it at 3.7 volts. Um, we're going to increase this because when this was built, this was the technology. This is a 12 cell battery pack from inside of another one that I rebuilt. I think these are 2,600 milliamp hours each. So if you're going to upgrade it, you might as well upgrade your cells too and get a higher rating on the entire power unit. I'm going to be using these guys. These are Panasonic uh, 18650s and they're rated at 3400. So instead of 8800, it's the capacity of this is now going to bump up to 13600 uh, rated at 11.1 .1 volts. Instead of 98 watt hours, I'm going to bump it up to 150 watt hours. So it was already an awesome piece of equipment by replacing the battery pack. Uh, it can be even that 33.3% more awesome, right? All right, how are we going to do this? Um, I already showed you the battery pack. We got to replace that. It's not, unfortunately, a plug and play. There's a lot of soldering that's going to be involved in this, and you're going to have to come up with 12 cells. So get yourself 12 cells, and here's how we're going to go about it. On the bottom, there are four screws we need to take out, and you'll need a 2.5 millimeter Allen screwdriver. Remove those four screws and then pop the cover off. So let's go ahead and do that, and I'll show you how these cells are laid out inside of the unit. All right, once you got those four screws out, before you pop that cover off and expose all the circuitry, just do a double check, flip up here. Make sure you didn't accidentally power this baby on while you were taking those screws out. Uh, once you've done that, just kind of work your fingernail underneath the edges and gently from both sides just kind of pull it straight up just like that and there's your battery pack now before it falls off you might as well go ahead and pull this little side panel off just slide them straight up and then when you do that come off of there well there we go when you do that get a black magic marker and just put just put a mark right there so he only goes in one way. If you try to reassemble it the other way for some reason, they didn't make it uh, easily interchangeable like that. All right, now we have a little issue, and that is the bottom plate, unlike on the Sherpa 50, uh, which pops right off, the bottom plate is set over these two shafts that the screws went into. So you just kind of pull these up on both sides, and when you pull it up with your finger, it should slide off. Like that and then you do the same thing on the other one I'm just gonna pry it up with my Allen screw and come on there you and just slide them right off set them off to the side now everything's exposed what you're gonna find though is that again unlike the Sherpa 50 the 100 actually has the batteries kind of glued down with a piece of double-sided sticky tape and if you look in there you can just see it. So what I like to do, just get a either a screwdriver or a knife and very gently just sit in there and just start from one end, just start prying it up just like that. Try not to short out your batteries. Again, that would be that would be a bad thing. So just keep prying it like that until you work your batteries loose. Let me go ahead and do that and uh, I'll get back with you. All right, once you've got it loose, don't try to pull it out yet because we want to do some marking. I want to be able to put the batter the new freshly built battery pack in exactly the way this one is so you know so we got the red wire going out here I've marked a plus um, we got some balance wires we got a green one I marked them with a G and a yellow one coming over here marked them with a Y and then the negative terminal is on this side but he's actually soldered on the bottom and we'll get to that in just a minute Another thing coming out here is this little black wire, a little double wire, and he's actually the thermosistor. So if this starts to overheat when you're discharging it or charging it, this will automatically shut everything off so it doesn't catch on fire. So let's go ahead and pull him off first. And all I'm going to do is just pull the little Kapton tape off and very carefully just tug on him. He's only held in there with silicone. In fact, that one wasn't in there very good at all. But just set him aside. 
pull all the tape off and just pull him back out of the way completely. At this point, go ahead and start removing your kept on tape because we're going to start desoldering these. Before we do that though, let's take a look at how this is laid out. It's very compact, but in fact it's three cells and each cell is actually, I mean, uh, uh, it's a bank of three cells. Each cell consists of four batteries. So if you were to fold this up, this is exactly how it's in there. You notice these are offset to the left a little bit, the top ones. So the plus is here, so the plus gets soldered right there. So let's fold it just like batteries that are inside of a, a flashlight. So we've got a plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus. That's how it folds into that very compact form fit. So it'll fit inside of there. And so our negative, of course, will be over there. Very cool the way that folds up, and we're just going to build it back exactly like that. So let's go ahead and desolder everything, pull it out of the way, and then we'll build the new battery pack. All right, this next part is probably the most challenging part of the whole project because you got to do either a lot of soldering or a lot of spot welding. We have to build our, back, our uh, replacement battery pack exactly the way this one is. It can't deviate, it can't be puffed up because there's not a lot of room in here. So you can't really use tape to hold everything together. Um, otherwise it just won't fit back inside of there. So pay very close attention to the orientation and to polarity. And then when you build your battery pack, there's one of two ways you can do it. Um, you can use, you can solder it or you can spot weld it. And when you do, it, either way, it doesn't really matter. Uh, you're going to either use these uh, tabs that you can buy on eBay and they're the perfect length to go between those terminals. Or what I do is I buy coils of zinc strip and then I cut them to whatever length I want. Oops. And then I, I can use them to custom make battery packs using my spot welder. So either way you go, soldering or spot welding, assemble your battery pack, pay very close attention, and build it. <laughs> I can't say it. I've built too many of these the wrong way, believe me. So pay attention to the orientation uh, and the polarities and put it together exactly like the one that came out of there, and you'll be good to go. All right, the hardest part of the project is done. I've got everything already with cap, uh, Captain Tape on here to insulate it, and I have all of the terminals exactly where they were before. My positive one located here. This is the one for the green wire, yellow wire. Those are both balance cables. And then the one on the bottom is the for the negative. Uh, everything is positioned exactly the way. Double check it before you start soldering. Make sure everything's going to fit right back into that case. The first one I'll solder will be the negative, and then I'll just reattach these other three, and then we'll take a look at it. All right, everything's soldered. I've got capped on tape on there to in insulate everything and hold all those loose wires down. The only thing I've done is I've put, gone ahead and put this back. I marked it so it was easy to put back in the correct location. And now we just put the base plate on and then reattach our top with those four screws. Before you go to all that trouble though, probably would behoove you to give it a test at this point. Go ahead and make sure your light works. And then after, if you know that does, then go ahead and click on the power switch. And you should be getting 20% if these are charged up to the storage level. So now everything's working, no smoke's coming out. Power it back off and put it all back together. All right, 30 minutes worth of work. We've taken what was a worn out, useless, non-rebuildable piece of equipment and not just rebuilt it, but uh, made it better than new, about one third higher capacity than it came out of the factory with, with uh, upgraded batteries. As a reminder that I did upgrade this one, I always put a sticker on the bottom to tell me what the capacity is. The only downside to this is that in order to be TSA compliant, it's got to be under 100 watt hours. This one now well exceeds that. So keep that in mind. You can no longer transport this in the cabin of the aircraft. Anyway, guys, good luck rebuilding your Sherpa. These are great tools. Don't throw them away. 30 minutes worth of work, better than new. Thanks, guys.